Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by JJ Zacharyson of FanDuel, who's here to tell us who to buy and sell as we head into week number 10. What's happening, JJ? Not too much. Hard to believe that we're in the double-digit weeks, but I'm ready for week 10. Absolutely ready to rock. Getting ready for week 10. And we begin with the Green Bay Packers star wide receiver, and that's Devontae Adams, who's back healthy, played the full game last week. We didn't have the vintage Devontae Adams performance, but hopefully that's coming. Yeah, we didn't see a great Devontae Adams performance or a Packers offensive performance. Uh, Devontae Adams only had 41 yards, but that creates a nice buy low opportunity. He still saw 31% of Green Bay's targets. He's seen 26.5% of their targets in all but one game played this year, and he hasn't scored a touchdown yet, so there's positive regression coming in the touchdown column based on his yardage total. We know that yards correlate strongly to touchdowns. Based on that total, he should have between two and three touchdowns right now. So positive regression is coming. The volume's there. We know Devontae Adams is good. He's an easy buy low right now. Devontae Adams, clearly someone that you should be buying at this moment. He's a number one wide receiver that you could, you could potentially get for not a number one wide receiver price. Another player that J.J. is buying here this week is Carolina's DJ Moore. We've talked before about DJ Moore, about how there should be some positive touchdown regression coming. We're still waiting. Yeah, we are. He hasn't scored since week three. That's obviously not a great sign, but he's seen a 24.3% target share, at least in every single game over the last month. Um, and based on his yardage total, he should have about two or three touchdowns as well. So that touchdown uh, a positive regression should hit for DJ Moore. He's seeing a lot of volume. That's really all you can ask for, especially for a buy low candidate. Moore looked good last week with Kyle Allen, and I expect more of the same uh, against Green Bay. DJ Moore is a number one type of wide receiver. We just need him to get into the end zone. Hopefully, that happens this Sunday. One last player that JJ is buying here, and that brings us to yet a third wide receiver. It's Baltimore's Hollywood Brown. Brown's healthy, which we hadn't been able to say for quite a while, and hopefully that turns into fantasy goodness. Yeah, so we haven't seen him since week five. And then this past week, obviously, with one of the tougher matchups that you can possibly find across the NFL, he still saw a 17% target share. When he had the ball in his hands, he looked like his explosive self. He's now seen at least 17% of the team's targets in every single game played. We know he's an explosive wide receiver who can score fantasy points in chunks. And in the fantasy playoffs in particular, they get the Browns and the Jets in weeks 15 and 16. So I like Marquise Brown as a nice buy low right now. Absolutely. Marquise Brown with the upcoming schedule that JJ mentioned, clearly somebody you should be buying. And given that he's been hurt and not all that effective in recent weeks, you should be able to get him cheaper than he's probably worth. Marquise Brown, obviously worth a trade. Let's move on to some players that you should be selling, according to JJ. And that brings us to Tennessee, where Derrick Henry is an interesting one because this offense revolves around him. And he finally had a big time game this past Sunday facing off against the Kansas City Chiefs here in week 10. Why do you want to sell him? Yeah, look, it's an offense that ranks seventh worst in yards per drive. They've actually run the fourth fewest red zone plays in the entire NFL. You know, Derrick Henry, all he does is score touchdowns, but he still ranks 26th in the NFL in goal line rushes this year. He's really overperforming in the touchdown column, and we know that he's not that much of a receiver, so his, his uh, ceiling is capped a little bit. He has under a 7% target share this season. So really, it all comes down to... Can Derrick Henry get fantasy points on the ground, whether it's via rushing yards or rushing touchdowns? He's done that so far, but in a bad offense, I don't want to bank on that for the rest of the season. Yeah, I get it. It's a bad offense. It's not an efficient offense either. But Derrick Henry has been known to go off toward the end of seasons. Hopefully, for the Derrick Henry owners, it's going to happen again here in 2019. Another running back that J.J. is selling is an obvious one. It's Adrian Peterson, who looked really good this past Sunday. There's a lot of factors working against him. Number one, Washington's on a bye this week, so you don't have him for week 10. When they come back out of that bye in week 11, it may be Darius Geist time. Clearly, Washington is looking toward the future with Dwayne Haskins being the starting quarterback, and you have to imagine they're going to phase out the 34-year-old running back and see what they have in Darius Geist. Yeah, look, Adrian Peterson under Bill Callahan has been averaging 19 rush attempts per game and 96 rushing yards per game, but he hasn't given you much of a ceiling, and it's because that Washington offense hasn't been very good. Under Callahan, they're averaging under nine points per game. I know that they've faced some tough defenses, but that's still a bad average regardless of opponent. With Darius Geis returning, I think Adrian Peterson, given the fact that he's not utilized at all as a receiver, he's a very, very easy sell candidate this week. Workload has been there for AP, but the ceiling, not all that high, as you said. And Darius Geis is coming. Now's the time to sell AP and 
by Darius Geis. One last player to get to, and it's another running back. So we're buying wide receivers and selling running backs here. It's the Packers' Jamal Williams, who is the backup to Aaron Jones, but has found the end zone, well, a lot recently. He's facing off against Carolina this Sunday. Why don't you like Jamal Williams? Yeah, I mean, really, if you look at uh, his peripheral numbers, he's only hit a 50% snap share once over his last four games, which are four games since returning from that brutal concussion. But he's been the RB4 in fantasy football over that time. Anytime you see that big of a discrepancy between fantasy production and, and how often a player is on the field or the type of usage that he's seeing, he's a pretty easy sell candidate. Um, and with Jamal Williams, like you said, he's been scoring a lot of touchdowns based on his yardage total. He has 3.6 more touchdowns than he should have right now. And it's not like he's overly involved as a receiver in this offense. In two of his four games, he's seen below a 10% target share in that Green Bay offense. So I think overall, Jamal Williams is fine, but I think that he's overperforming, making him a sell candidate. Jamal Williams is okay, and especially this week where there's so many buys. He's a, he's a fine start. But is he going to be this good? No. And if you're not the Aaron Jones owner, you can try to push him along to him. Certainly worth considering this week during Week 10. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, JJ. It's been a blast. Good luck this weekend. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it, man. Tomorrow, Jim Sonis will join me as we look toward DFS in Week 10. Have a great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow.